What's good, everybody? This is Ray Daniels, a.k.a. The Culture Referee, and I'm here to talk to you about Two Loss Distribution. They are one of the most technologically advanced distributors in music. They distribute to more stores than any of the distributors around. They distribute, uh, they give you 100% of your royalties. They only charge you $3 a month, and you have an instant option to get an advance from these guys. So if you're watching this and you want to be in the music business and you're trying to figure out how to get help, I'm here to tell you, go to twoloss.com and use the word God's as your coupon code and you get the first three months free. It's Rick the Negotiator. This is Ray Daniels, a.k.a. The Culture Referee. And this is Artist Spotlight. Let's go. <laughs> by the way, this is Artist Spotlight presented by Two Lost. Let's get it. And today's guest, before we even get into that, shout out to you. Like, share, subscribe. I have to do that. So I have to. I know y'all probably get tired of podcasts for doing that. But if I didn't do that, you wouldn't know what to do after I do what I do. But that's neither here nor there. We have a, a young, developing star in the making. And I'm going to give you that because the person that introduced you to me would not have even allowed us to do this if he didn't take pride in you being a developing star. Facts. Let's give it up for Papa J, everybody. Yeah. So, so Papa J, this is this is our spotlight. So, uh -huh. we use this as an opportunity for discovery. So, tell us about the Papa J character. Like, who is Papa J? Papa J is me. You know, um, when I was three years old, I really wanted to start this. You know, Do, me Papa start. What is this? Music. Okay. Acting. The, the industry period, but it was first music, mm -hmm. rapping. I used to listen to my dad on mixtape. My dad was rapping in Chicago. Okay, T, T rap. Okay, cool. Yeah, That's why, okay, T, I see yeah. he was in there trying to play low. We understand. I understand everything going on now, T. Let's go. <laughs> he was a popular, popular rapper in Chicago, so I listened to his mixtapes. I had my dad's song on the radio. My thing was, I was like, man, I'm trying to be like my pops, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I first started rapping, and um, before I can even go make my first song, it was my birthday. And my dad asked, no, 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 I'm tweaking. If I got straight straight A's on my report card, okay. I can go get my ears pierced and I can uh, make my first song. So <laughs> that, that year mm -hmm. in school, I was hustling. <laughs> love it. I love it. I was, I was straight up hustling. <laughs> so I got them straight A's. I got my report card, gave it to my dad. Pop Cena, he was like, all right, come on. I remember I went to uh, Claire's or whatever it was. I was three years old. Got my ears pierced. I saw a lot of girls, and I was like, "Yeah, you know, it's, it's up, it's up." <laughs> my ears pierced. What's up? <laughs> Left out of there, recorded my first song called Papa's House. Mm. And so, Papa, the name, it came from me being young with an old soul, because mm. I was always able to hold conversations with older people at a yeah. very early age. Yeah. And that just came from you know my pops reading with me all the time, doing flashcards. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, the regular stuff you're supposed yeah. to do. But, you know, spending time with me a, a whole lot, that just, it made me be able to hold conversations with older people. So, that's how I got Papa. So, Papa is, is me. Okay. You know what I mean? And what's Jay? Jay, well, it came from my middle name. My middle name is James. My real name is Thaddeus James Mixon. So, if you see me and when I'm acting, you'll see Thaddeus James Mixon on mm -hmm. the credits. So, I you just took the James and then took the Jay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, 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 was it, what? I'm gonna ask you this because I know I can, because I know you, you, I know who you've been working with, so I understand this. So I want to ask you, like, was it a, was the journey whatever hits, or it was the journey, was it calculated? Like, let's start off acting because you're younger, right? Because it's, a lot of people think it's it's good to start artists off as kid acts, but it makes it difficult for them to grow up unless they lyrical subject matter is adult. Like that's why Michael Jackson was nine years old singing, can it be I stayed away too long? Did I leave your mind when I was gone? Like she, he, he could have been singing about bullshit, but he was singing adult things. So was it strategic? Did you want to do the acting thing and then go into the rap or, or the music? Not rap, right? You do. Nah, it was, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you finish. Okay, so, can, you so did, you wanna do, did you want to go into the, did you want to be an actor first then go into music, or did you want to be kind of like what Drake did, or was it like whatever one hit first, that was the one that you was going to run with? Nah, so I started off doing music first. Okay. Rapping. 
So my first show was in front of 40,000 people with Michelle Montana in Trinidad overseas. Oh, wow. I was headlining a uh, Soka Music Fest with Fat Man Scoop, Michelle, when I was five years old. Michelle Montana? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so I was on there. I had, like, <laughs> feel me, a little Michael Jackson <laughs> jacket on, rapping my own verse and stuff like that. <laughs> so I knew that this is what I wanted to do. The acting didn't come until I turned 11 years old. I'm 16 right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? But um, I guess... You can say it definitely was calculated when it came to um, doing the music first as well. I mean, I never thought that I was going to end up doing the acting stuff, honestly. Mm. I thought it was going to strictly just be music. Mm -hmm. And uh, when it came to the rapping, I even noticed just looking looking back, my followers preparing me for the industry through mm. my raps. So I wasn't doing just necessarily kid music. Yeah. Like, our raps were, were in it, like, really helping me understand the, the the music industry at an early age. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's like I, I had a song called Love and me okay. and my dad did. And um if you remember it pops. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> like but the Tap me in. Yeah, <laughs> nah, for real. Cause this verse I ain't gonna lie. Come on Pop it's pops come on come on come on come on Matt come on. So good. <laughs> Even now with this with the verse that he you feel me? Wrote for me at the time. T, he, come, he got you, T. I'm listening. Yeah. yeah. I didn't understand it, but now I do. Yeah. Go ahead, Fox. Well, <laughs> to answer your question about being strategic, yeah. what I wanted for him, I taught, I used his passion to um, teach him about life. Yes. You know, even with school, like with rap, when he first started rapping, because he sings. Mm. Right? So when he first, he was rapping first. So I would rap his spelling words in my phone, mm. right? And he would have headphones on and that's how he would memorize his spelling words. Yeah. Right? So he's taking tests and everybody, the teacher's like, why is he moving? Why? Because he, he was, that's how he would pass all the spelling oh, tests. Oh, wow. He had right? the rhythm in his head of yeah, what he was doing. That's fire. What you see about. And you know, we just had this conversation. We just said this with Rhapsody. We just said this with Rhapsody. We talked to Rhapsody and that's what we spoke about. She was like, Melody is the easiest thing to make yeah, people remember, definitely. so if you, that's why they get the ABCs, the one, two, threes, and melodies, so that way kids can always sing yeah, them. Like even overseas, yeah. people don't know uh, English, our, our language, but, but they, they, but they can melodies. follow. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. that's what I I use his passion to develop him, yeah. and everything from a parent standpoint, I was teaching him to be fearless. Yeah, right. So like even in the parks where he would. Um, you know, he'd get on the monkey bars. All the parents are helping their kids on the monkey bars. Yeah. Me was like, no, nah, you're going to figure out how to get up there. Exactly. Like, so he would climb on the side of the monkey bars. So the whole time he's climbing, at the time, you know, I, I had my own gym. So I was also was on the gym and yeah. trained people. So I was building up his body, but he'd climb up the side of the pole. Yeah. Right? And then he would slide down and fall down. I'd look at him and say, hey, we're going to come back tomorrow. Mm. So he would keep doing it. And finally he got to the, pot, to the top and he was like, daddy, I did it. So that made, you know what I'm saying? It was that like felt an accomplishment better. for him. Exactly. Yeah. So from that point on, you know, every, you know, he's climbing six, like I filmed his whole life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I got everything that he's saying, even the first time he recorded at three. And oh, wow. So he's climbing a 60 foot pole, but he's seeing grown men that can't get up there. Yeah. So mentally it made him feel like I'm stronger than you. Yeah. You know what exactly. I'm saying? For sure. So um, that led to the first show, which was my show. Yeah. Montana. Yeah. Cause yeah. I, used to, I used to train my shell and then, he was doing a song for Will Smith, Will Smith, and he wanted me to write for him. Yeah, you know, so I ended up writing, and that's how we kind of, how we got out there was he did a show, and my show brought him out at where Will and Jada was in the front row, and there was some event they were having. Pittsburgh. And then, and yeah, and then the, the front page of the Trinidad paper said. Uh, Michelle Montano performs with Will Smith, but it was his picture on the front page. Oh, wow. Page. That's so all. So Trinidad man. kept asking, like, who is the kid? Yeah. So my show was like, hey, let's bring him over there. So that's how it started. Mm. But the acting was to offset the pressure of the music business. Yeah. By, by the way, I love that strategy. That's why mm -hmm. I was asking, you know, obviously, uh, like, that's my son right there. He was a child actor. Uh, I didn't want him to do music because I just, I don't like music. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I just don't like music. If unless he wants to, but um, I like acting. But acting for me was, you can tell you're an actor because actors aren't shy. Like people, like somebody told me when I was like maybe like 15 years ago, she said this. This coach said she said, if you want to train your kids, the number one fear amongst adults is public speaking. It's the number one fear amongst adults, and the only way to change your kids and not to get away from that is put them in acting because mm -hmm. acting requires you remember lines, it requires you to be in front of a camera and not be afraid. So as soon as you start talking, I was like, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. I can see it. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Because 
you wouldn't believe how many people we sit down with and they don't say nothing. Damn, and it's like, this your shit. Like, I mean. But he, that's where the name came from. But he, he speaks with confidence and it's very yeah, articulate. Yeah. And it oozes. You, like, yeah, you first can tell. three words, it was like, oh, no, he's, you can tell. he's ready. You can tell. As soon as you open your mouth, I was like, oh, okay, yeah. And to be honest with you, I love it. I love it even more because I always speak about, like, we have a segment on our show called The Godfather. Because mm -hmm. The God Show. Because I always speak on, like, the, the male voice is missing in the household. Like, you can tell. So, seeing a father put greatness, to me, that's like. That's what the fuck and is about. And even the segue with what you're saying, that I used to tell him when he was young, like it's the difference between everybody's good, yep, and everybody's not great. Yes. So right. what do you want to strive for? And he would tell me, greatness. And yeah. his development was fun. It was, what would you do when you wanted to race me when you were young? <clears throat> nah, we'd go run in the sand and and rap our lyrics. Mm. So pretty much my pops would be like, I bet you can't spit your first spit your verse. And run all the way down in the get to the end of the little sand pit. Yeah, or like he couldn't be mad. Yeah. Yeah. I can wrap mine faster than yours, and I'll mm. beat you in the race. And but so I was, kept doing that. It was building his stamina. stamina. Mm. So yeah. when they get on stage, so everything was wax on, wax off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. mind games that, but making it. Yeah. yeah, I didn't know, and like I said, I didn't understand like exactly what was going on because it was fun. Yeah, like I. I came home from school and I was like, I want to go do music. Like, mm -hmm. you mm. know, I was hooping, of course. I yeah. played basketball, played sports, of course, being a regular kid. But I was like, I want to do music. Yeah. And then, of course, my biggest thing, I was like, man, I want to be on billboards. And, of course, that came with the acting. Like, yes. seeing, you know what I mean? Yeah. Seeing that. And then my first movie, I ended up having a, 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 a billboard, a wall. It's like a wall billboard on, on Sunset Boulevard. Mm -hmm. It's a movie called Safety on Disney+. Plus. Mm -hmm. And that right there, we just... And they were, and even when I like the agents, I met them and I told them I was like, uh, "He's gonna book everything that we say we're gonna book." Mm. And they was like, "Oh, it don't happen like that." I said, "Oh, that don't happen for other people." Yeah. And they said, "Why would you think your kid is different?" I said, "Cause he put his ten thousand hours in." Yeah, it. exactly. So the universe mm -hmm. gonna reward him. Yeah. So the first audition we got was safety. Um, I read the script. I called him back. I said, "You gonna book it?" And they was like, "Well, we want you to get your hopes up high and, you know, all that." And again, like I said, I did this so he can be financially set and music can be fun. Yes. You know what I mean? Because you was an artist and you know, yeah. that's why I didn't want my son in it because it's a, it is a, music is a really hard thing to survive in. Because if you're, if you're, either you're moving forward or you're sinking. It's just two options in music. So if you're not moving, you're sinking. Mm -hmm. So you got to always keep moving no matter how hard it is. And it's not about, it's about, it's not, people don't care about how you feel. They don't care mm. about how you, what was going on that day. They don't care. They just like, impress me. That's why I like music is so hard because it's, it's just a game where, you know, it's subjective and it's subjective. And, you know, just because one person says no, doesn't mean that the answer is no. You probably played it for the wrong person. So music is kind of like, it's a lot of letdown, kind of like, and it's chasing and getting hot. So I just, I like it, but I like it from the coach standpoint. Like, and I'm sure you understand this, like, because at least from the coach standpoint, you just got to wait for the right player. Mm. But you, but being the right player, now that's, that's why I got to give you kudos. Like, putting that in you, that's different. Like, even me, with my guys, I, like Rock City, who I built everything with, they dad. Mm. They dad would keep them, like, he would make them sit in their living room, and they would have to perform. 12 years old, they want to go out and play with their friends. Mm -mm. Y'all going to perform for me until I, and y'all going to have to do something incredible. Well, I, I tell you this to cut you off. Go ahead. The difference with him? Is that I would tell him to go out and he would say, No, I'm staying mm. in and working. Yeah. <laughs> no, dad, no, dad yeah. ass. He would, he would, he would I love that. He would kick you for two days and I'm like, Yo, you gonna go out? No, I feel like I'm not being productive. Yeah. So, Ooh, I like that's when, when, when parents, like, just the, you know, uh, uh, parents would come to me and I always ask for advice, right? Yeah. So, when they come to me, I'm like, Then they would, the thing they say, Well, does he get a chance to be a kid? And I would ask a question. I said, So, if your kid wake up at eight o'clock, uh, how, how long, how, how when, what time do you wake up in the morning in the summer? In the summer? Yeah. <laughs> what time do you wake up? Okay, so, <laughs> so. Not this summer. <laughs> <laughs> this summer. No, this summer he already know he's working for his dad. Like hey, this summer he's going to be an intern so every day. He, so, so I would say, like, well, my son, he, gonna, he get up at six, right? Mm -hmm. So this is normal. This is if they wake up at nine, ten. Say they go to bed at one, two. Mm -hmm. You got 15, 16 hours in a day, right? Yeah. So how many hours do you need to be a kid, mm. right? So with him, he on his own, he knows me. If he don't ask me to go to the studio, mm -hmm. if he don't ask me about <laughs> audition, this is life. I don't yeah. hear this shit Troy already. Yeah. Troy know how it is. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. He know how it is. Yeah. So um, 
that it it was he would wake up, he gonna work out in the morning. He gonna he may take a hour to study an actor. He gonna take an hour to do the mm. music, like you know, to to either he's yeah. gonna study it or he's gonna be in the studio recording. Mm -hmm. And then he may take an hour to read a book because I tell him that's how your pen game is. Uh, yeah, is, is, for sure. Is, yeah, and, you know, and then you can see how he talks. That he's very educated. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, sure. very smart kid. And then that's five hours done, right? So you got ten hours to be the kid. Yeah. How many times? I bet you, you and your friends would sit around for four hours trying to figure out what to do. Well, right? I tell I tell people all the time. I'm like, the problem that we have is that we we don't we treat kids like kids, but we don't realize that they're going to be an adult a whole lot longer. Oh yeah. Like definitely. you're going to be a kid for maybe 13 years. I mean, because you don't realize you're a kid till you five, six, then you know what's really going on, and then shit, you're 18 in 13 years, and now you grown for the rest of your life. And so I always say like, don't treat them like a kid. Like I don't treat mine like kids. I'm like. Y'all gonna have to go out here and take on the world. And mm -hmm. if you ain't prepared for it, it's gonna be a really hard life. Especially as a man, a black man. Black man, yes. yep. Yes. Cause it's gonna yeah. be a hard life. So, so you, you have a great grasp on what you wanna do. How do you, I wanna speak about music now. Cause that's what I do. Uh, mm -hmm. The difference between a movie star and a music star is identity. Right, and a, a movie like like Brad Pitt's a movie star, but he gets paid to be other people. Mm -hmm. Like Drake's a rap star; he has to be Drake. So I'm saying, so how how do you plan on balancing the character? And unless you get like that girl Lele, who made the character the star, and that's different. But if you have a character you're playing over here, and you have an artist you're developing, how do you find those voices? Like how how like what's the process for you figuring out this my rap voice this my artist voice but this is not this is the actor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, <clears throat> as you know, like my name is Thaddeus James Mixon, mm -hmm. so it's almost kind of like how Childish Gambino. Yeah, you got Donald sure. Glover and then you got Childish Gambino. Mm -hmm. When I'm acting, I'm Thaddeus James Mixon. When yeah. I'm doing music, I'm Papa, Papa J. J. But all that is still me. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. So um. It's not really hard for me to balance. I've I've never really had any trouble trying to balance like doing mm -hmm. music or acting because my thing is it's like when I'm on set, okay, I go on set for what, 12, 16 hours or whatever it is. If I'm off set the next day, I'm just going to go to the studio. Yeah. You know what I mean? For I sure. got I also put the studio in my career, so I'll make records and then boom, once I got a record that's dope, I tell my pops, my dad, he get Troy on. Yeah. Boom, we in the studio and we making magic. You gotcha. know what I mean? So it's never really hard for me to balance the what, two, honestly. What, 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 what I'm, I'm not speaking about the work. I'm speaking about the voice, right? Mm -hmm. So like, so like, it's two artists have two voices. The one we hear and the one they represent, right? Most artists know the voice you hear. Artist development is in developing the art, developing the voice you represent, right? So that way you're not just singing any song. You're singing your song. You're not just, it's like, it's like putting emphasis on the lyrics. Like, like uh, what, what did we say on the last show? She was like, uh, Guru would say, what lines aren't we crossing today? Mm -hmm. Like, as an artist, you have a box you live in. As a movie star, you can be anything they want you to be. Right. But as an artist, like, I mean, even look at Drake, they still call him Wheelchair Jimmy, because that was a character he played. But he developed, Drake and Wheelchair Jimmy is different. That's what I was mm -hmm. mean, like, like, you're 16, right? And you obviously have a great foundation with your father. Sure. But as you grow in, you know, like, I don't, it's funny because I don't really, you're probably the first parent manager that I, I was like, oh, okay, he gets it, mm. right? And because you did it, but I don't even like working with people with their parents. Because like, I, I don't care if your parent is impressed. Your parent's not your audience. Your audience is your age. So what do you want to do? And a lot of the times you work with child artists, they like, well, they kind of look like, well, I don't want to offend this. It's, it's happened so many times with so many artists that I signed to major labels. So, so because of that, that's why I wanted to do this show. I understand the importance of developing the voice. Mm -hmm. So I'm just asking that, because the voice comes from experiences, but your experience is a very high level. That's why I think Tyrese lost, got lost. He, 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 you know, the, the act, the, the rap, the artist was down here. The movies was up here which made him think everything was up here, but no, nigga. You're gonna have to work them shits just, you're gonna have to go do the same. We don't give a fuck if you're in the Transformers. Like, we ain't gonna buy your song because you're in the Transformers. So music is very subjective. That's the only thing that matters in music is the subject. So I'm just curious, like, how do you develop that voice? Like, what was that, like, how do you get there? Well, let me ask you, and let me ask, do you know the art of acting? 
Uh, I feel like I'm playing a character every day, so I'm gonna say a little bit, but I've never acted on set. Okay, so the art of acting is not acting, it's reacting. Mm. Right? If you watch Denzel Washington in the movie, when you talk to him, he talks the same. Mm-hmm. You can go watch Safety, you can go watch Creed 3, Reasonable Doubt, you can go watch Candy Can Lane, you can go watch South of Heaven, you can watch, he's been top five in casting and everything he's booked. Mm. And he acts just like he, he it's, 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 see the thing is, even with the parent, like, you know, I'm 45, mm -hmm. so it's like the old school way of, yeah. we thought. It's a different day and age. Mm -hmm. These kids don't give a shit about the shit that we cared about. No, that's what, that's what I right? said. That, but yeah. that's what I'm saying. So when I'm yeah. in a room with a parent, I'm like, I hear you parent, but we you can't parent them to their audience. That's what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. yeah. But, and then you got to look at success. Success is based off perspective. Mm -hmm. Right? So could you be the next Drake? Or could you make $200,000 a month for the rest of your life and be happy? Uh, exactly. Well, not mm -hmm. even like happy. Joy. Joy pulls you out the bed. Happiness is temporary. For sure. Right? So when you look at the, the 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 question is the art of acting mm -hmm. is not acting mm -hmm. right i'm his acting coach right got gotcha. you um, um we choreograph everything together i don't know if he, he dances ass off he mm -hmm. does he, he you know he does he flips he does you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. like so it's i tell him all the time once you put on a face you've lost yeah so if you walk out the house and be you Papa, he been Papa way before he was Actually, Thaddeus. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> For sure. Like, like I said, I've been... People don't even... They just know him now. Also. Like, his whole... When he in, in Chicago, I got him on the block. I got him with... in in uh, You know, the, the nation, the fair... They, like, my son used to want to wear suits because he used to saw the Muslims on the, on, on, on the block yeah. selling... You know what I'm saying? Yeah, mm -hmm. So, he used to want to go to park in the suit. Yeah. No, you know I, what I mean? swear to God. <laughs> yeah. I'm talking he wanted about, to go like, to, man, I want a suit. Yeah. Bow tie, you know, and I everything really we're saying, it. we got the footage yeah, of to it. Prove it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So it, well, my thing was to put him around. You know, my my family, you know, they from there too. So yeah, they he's sure. around every bit. Uh, like he can go sit and have a conversation about SpongeBob as a kid and the president. Yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? For but sure. when it comes to the business, we just operate off of like we're not following rules, mm -hmm. right? Because when you're one of one, mm -hmm. like just again with his. What, what I said about the agents. The first movie, they said they didn't know if he was going to book. He booked, he booked the lead, right? Mm -hmm. Jamie Foxx, all them call. I ain't been on the wall on Sunset Boulevard. You yeah. on your first movie, yeah. right? So the second one, it's like, oh, maybe it's luck. They passed on you, right? Mm -hmm. He got on the I phone. Told him, I was like, it ain't no way. He got on the phone, called the agents and said, I prayed on it, I manifested it, that's my, my movie. They and said, I know no. I killed it though. They offered another kid the, the role. Mm -hmm. And we said, no, they're going to call back. Five mm -hmm. days later, they called call back, back on his birthday. birthday. He booked it and he won Best New Actor for it, mm. right? COVID hit right when we got done. As soon as COVID opened, he booked Creed Three, Reasonable Doubt, and Wonder Years in the same week, mm. right? So everything that I tell them, I'm like, we're going to book, bro. I'm not following your rules. How the hell are you going to tell us? You don't know the work that we put in. Yeah, for and sure. And you're not, I can't give you the, the honor of being God. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we, we follow, I listen to him. Mm -hmm. I relay the message to him. Mm -hmm. And then that's how we operate. Got you. You know what I mean? So, Got you. So just to answer the question is, it's no separate, mm -hmm. right? It's it, it, it be, When he becomes a separate, mm -hmm. right? Like you just said about, I don't, the, the Tyrese thing, it, it's, I understand Tyrese because mm -hmm. you just said it yourself. Yeah. What pay better? We know the acting world pays way better. No, no, I know it does, but that is also why, and I, I don't want to like focus on Tyrese, but that's also why Tyrese is not tank as an artist. Because he spoke to me, he feels like he spoil you. He feels like his perception is, 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 like, like, and, and I hear everything you're saying. But music is an entirely different beast because music is not about a casting agent. Mm. Music is not about a person saying yes. Music is about an audience saying yes, which means you have to get to that audience. Which means, like, when, when you're acting, it's like I'm sitting here and I'm watching you, right? Even if I'm not, even if. Even if I didn't watch it, whoever watched it had to sit there and watch it. Music, you have to make me feel something. I have to hear you and say, oh shit, he's something, right? Mm. Especially as you get older, like like that girl Lele don't have to say nothing because she's rapping to six year olds, seven year olds. But if she wants to grow up and be like Lauren Hill, she, who was also a child actor, mm -hmm. she had to say something, she had to go through something. Music is about your take on our experiences. So. Usher might say, here's my confession. I fucked up on cheating on my chick on the side and got her pregnant. Bruno Mars might say, man, I hope he buys you flowers. I hope he grabs you by your hand. Cause I didn't do that when I was your man. 
Same, same, same situation. I'm looking at someone I fucked up with. One is just saying, I'm sorry. And one is saying, I fucked up, come back. Mm -hmm. That's music is not a music. Like, like, that's why I love it so much. Because you can't buy your way into it. You can't cheat your way into it. Well, you can cheat your way into it. But usually people that cheat give up. They go to somebody like Troy and say, write the song, produce a song for me, and then get mad that Troy made all the money in publishing, but you didn't want to get in the studio and write the fucking song. Over. So it's like, so music, and this is what I do. Like, I'm the guy, let me tell you who I am. I'm the guy that the labels call and say, hey, Ray, we just signed this kid. We've been having him for three years. We don't know what to do with him. He's talented, he's sick, and that's, that's a whole nother, that has nothing to do with acting. And respectfully, I'm telling you, music is about you. Acting is about re what you're doing. So when I'm speaking about, I'm asking like the development of the voice, right? So when I say, so you might say like Drake says, started from the bottom. Now we're here, right? That's his version. Fucking Jay-Z says, it's a hard knock life for us. Instead of treating we get, it's the same perspective. It's we on the grind, we ain't there, we're going here, and this is my perspective on it. So when I'm working with artists, I'm like, dog, I do this every day. And there are, I, you wouldn't believe, my favorite question I ask artists is, how many songs you got recorded? How many songs you got recorded? Over a hundred. Okay. I love that. <laughs> so I always say, how many songs you got recorded? They would say 100, 200. Oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. And you still ain't got the hit though. That's because you ain't developed the voice. That's because you don't know how you want to say it. Like, by the way, I managed to do that, 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 plot, that record right there, Locked Away. I managed two of the most talented human beings on earth in the music business by far. The reason why we didn't win was because we could do so much. We thought because we gave Trey Songs a hit that we can give ourselves a hit. We thought because we gave the Pussycat Dolls a hit, we can give ourselves a hit. Because we gave Rihanna a hit, why can't, Rihanna sung Porter, why can't we sing Porter? Mm -hmm. We thought it was just about music and putting it out and being a star. That's what we thought. Man, that shit has nothing to do with that. But you, but you said, so I just, I'm gotcha. clear. You say you didn't win because you made these hits for everybody else, but you- No, no, so that's, 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 that's the early part of the story. Uh -huh. When we started making hits was when I started understanding what was necessary, like the connectivity of it all. Like, like, how, like what can I attach you to that people are gonna connect you to? So Rick Ross, for example, he comes out. It was two things that he, it was two things that you got from his, well, three things you got from his video, Every Day I'm Hustling. Number one, he a big boy. <clears throat> Right, because he could have had his shirt on and been covered up, but he wanted to see, he wanted to show you shirt off. Right. Second thing was he's from Miami, so he says, "Here's the Miami y'all know, but let me show you the Miami I grew up in." And the third thing was he's a hustler. So, so now we know who he is. What was Young Jock? It's going down. What what is what was going down? I don't know. So we don't even know what to hold you for. Great song, hit record, you made a whole lot of money, but we didn't care what you had to say next because. What you said the first time was just a good song. So when you're working with an artist to develop a career, you have to have a voice, a defined voice, a known voice. And I can, I can sit back and tell you, like, by the way, last year, 36 million songs were uploaded last year. 36 million. Out of 36 million songs that were uploaded, 10,000 roughly was from major labels. So that means 35 million, 990,000 songs were uploaded from people who thought, I can do music. Now, the people who understand what I just said are the people who are breaking through. Because I, I can't, me and Troy can go to the top of the mountain and say, Papa J, Papa J. They might just be like, oh, okay, shit, this probably works for you now. Because mm -hmm. now they're looking at it like, y'all close? Okay, now I'm really looking at that because y'all think y'all know so much. So it's, a, it's, just a, it's, just a, it's just a line that you have to ride as an artist that it's nothing like it. It's nothing like it. Nothing like music, bro. Nothing like it, bro. I can put a million dollars into you. I can put 10 million into you. And they can still want him. I put all the money in you, but they want you. That has nothing. I, it's not about people pick who they want. The people pick. And you got to give them a reason to pick. Puff son is dope. Son is dope. Why they ain't fucking with him? There's a reason. He can drop, start it from the bottom, and they still wouldn't fuck with him. Why? There's a reason. The reason is, is how the fuck are you going to talk about something when you didn't do nothing? Your dad did all the work. So you can't talk about the Maybachs if you didn't earn it. We don't want to hear that. We don't care if you got a Maybach if your dad bought it. That's what hip hop is built on. It's built on you and your voice. And but just so we clear, got you. he don't rap. No, I think he's, so he's a, a singer. No, no, I see. He's, he's a, a full fledged <laughs> singer. Okay, so even, but even, but even <laughs> singing it, but even singing it, so that's even better. So even with singing, that's kind of a little bit more complicated than rap because a lot of singers are actors. 
And I think that's what Troy does. Am I right, Troy? Like you take you take them and help them figure out their voice, right? The singer. That's what I'm saying. Like a lot of like Whitney Houston, because the probably greatest singer ever of all time. She ain't wrote a lyric in her life. Is she a dope artist? I think. So. What's good, everybody? This is Ray Daniels, aka the Culture Referee. And if you were wondering who this beautiful woman sitting next to me is, is my sister Tiffany Daniels Sai. Let's give it up for my sister. Everybody, get clap. This is good. And my sister is, she's the most talented person in the family. And we started a family business, a signature scent company. So if you like smoke a lot of weed in your car and you want to get the scent out, you have to check out these scents. I know guys that use it for the weed. I know people that use it for cologne and everywhere they go to get compliments. We make candles. We make room sprays. We got them in kits. So if you want to buy something for your loved one or anybody, you know, that you care about, Hit us up, LorraineCo.com. And we're going to put the website at the bottom of it. Uh, but support this black business, support this black woman, and order, I promise you guys. As a matter of fact, use the word gods, and we'll give you 15% off. I just made that up, so if my sister's <laughs> face looks crazy, don't get mad at her. I'll eat that. But guys, when I tell you this shit is incredible, you really should check this out. The best sense ever. LorraineCo.com. And we'll put it at the bottom of the screen. Thank you. Thanks. So? Yes. But, so it's different. So it's like, either you're going to be the song or somebody's going to give you the song. That's what I'm basically saying when it comes to the right. So you can, you can tell them your, your process yeah. even with Troy. Oh, yeah. So what a lot of people <laughs> don't understand, too, is because of my age, they don't think I do what I do, which is writing and producing mm -hmm. as well. So I don't know if Troy already told you, but I know when y'all had the, the interview the first time, and I think he said one thing about I come in the studio and I know exactly what I want to do, mm -hmm. exactly how I'm going to do it and how I'm going to accomplish it. For sure. That's, that's, that's exactly what I do in the studio. First thing I do, if I want to sample something, okay, I'll go find the, the, you know what, let's not even use the sample. I'll sing the sounds that I hear in my head. When mm. it comes to playing a piano, I can't play the piano. Yeah. If it's a guitar, I'll sound it out pretty much to him. Mm -hmm. Troy is able to play it. He'll play it. Boom. When it comes to the drums. I'll be like, I got this kick in my head or whatever. He'd be like, play it. I go play the uh, play the kick. Troy go quantize it, do whatever it is to make it fully come together. Cause I don't know how to exactly, exactly. do it on the programs for real. For, for sure, yeah, yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we building towards. Then we go ahead and we take it to Pro Tools or whatever, mm -hmm. right? I start laying my melodies. The song comes together, me and my pops write it, or I might write it myself. That's just how we work. Mm -hmm. So everything I do when it comes to my music, I'm involved in. Yeah, for sure. It's not it's not one song you can say that I have that I, I don't have nothing to do with. No, that's not what I'm speaking about. I'm speaking mm -hmm. no, about, no, I get you. I, I'm only speaking about, I only worry, I worry about the audience. Mm -hmm. It's the audience and the brand, like when you're working with an artist. So I just worry about the audience because if the brand is established and I can bring an audience to this brand, they'll stick around. If there's no brand, I can bring an audience. They'll come, they'll jam with you, but then when it's over, they'll leave and go to somebody else. So that's what I mean. Like I'm just, and like I said, I do this shit every day. So you wouldn't believe it's artists that sign right now that don't know nothing. Like it's like they, they like I think I did a video. Where I said the the hardest part of my business is that there are artists that are working hard that think they're winning. They're working. They're in rehearsal. They think that they're in rehearsal. Like so that's what they're doing. And to me, I always tell artists develop. The, that's great, but develop you. Don't forget you in there. Like get well, the body uh, together. Let me, so get, let me tell you then. Yeah. So then, Eric, so Timlin tried to sign him when he was six. Mm -hmm. Mark Pitts wanted to sign him when he was twelve. Mm -hmm. I didn't do neither deal because I put the studio in his room. Mm -hmm. I did. When you're in high school, you're figuring out who you are. Yes, right? exactly. Mm -hmm. So I allowed him. What What do I need to sign you to? Them or Mark, Mark Gucci, that's like Uncle Gucci, that's yeah. the family, right? Yeah, he came my first deal. Mark, yeah. Pitts, yeah. Mark is my mm -hmm. guy, so but he, he and he can see this and he can, he can, uh, uh, he would tell you it's 100% facts. It's like, well, if it's going to be a development situation, uh, I can develop it myself, mm -hmm. so I don't, it's no need to sign to a situation yeah. at this moment. Mm -hmm. He needs to go into this in the room by himself and figure himself out and yeah. write his record, sure. So, when he, if you, if I show you the first video of him meeting Troy. I I only contact I've never contacted not one industry person mm -hmm. right because my thing is that we're gonna keep our head down that's how we did in acting we're gonna bet on ourselves and keep doing what we're doing for sure and again success is based off perspective right For people sure. will come in and tell you 
Yeah, this is what he needs to be doing. Well, we may have this goal. Yeah. Right? And yeah. again, happiness, temporary, joy pulls you out the bed. Yep. This shit pulls my son out the bed anymore. So yeah. as a parent, all I care about is the joy that he's exactly, having. Exactly, for sure. Right? So when it came to Troy, I, Trey Songs, Chris Brown, Usher, Mark Pitts, Troy, the only two people I've ever hit up. Now, I've had people call me, of course, right, mm -hmm. consistently. So when he walked into Troy's studio, I can send you the video. First thing he said, I don't need to do nothing. Like, you're already there. You're ready to go. I just need to play this, blah, blah. And we just developed this this dope relationship because sure. Troy was the, the out of the people that we work with, honestly. And I don't, I'm not going to say everybody we was in the studio with. <laughs> but normally we go to the studio. I, I'll give you a perfect example because he's my boy. He, he will... Harmony Samuels. We go to the studio with Harmony. Harmony. Oh. He got 12 writers and producers in the bit in the, yep. in the building. So they're all just, they wrote for everybody and their mama. They laying melodies, this, yeah. this, and that. And then, again, you're 40 some years old trying to write for a 13, 14 year old. Mm -hmm. Everything you say, he don't say. Mm -hmm. Everything you mm -hmm. talk about, he don't give a shit about. Mm -hmm. Right? And that's the, I think that's, even with Chris, we love Chris to death. But Chris is almost 20 years older than my son. Yeah. Right? So it's, yeah. a, it's a, people don't understand that. I do, yeah. Right? So with that being said, they all writing. We, it was one guy in there knew my music, so I kind of connected to him. We left. My son is kind of upset why he's, and, I, and I'm like, he like, man, they ain't allowing me to. Do me. Right. So I said, well, this is what publishing is. This is how it's work. Everything is still a life lesson, right? So we go back early. He didn't even want to eat. He was so mad. Yeah. Right. So we we go back to the studio. Everybody's gone, <laughs> and the guy says, "Pop, do you like it?" He said, "You know, because he's very respectful. He's like, it's cool, but it's not really me." Yeah. So he go in and lay his melodies, which he's been taught because we used to battle in the studio because you know the whole Jay Z don't write nothing down, yeah. right? So mm -hmm. he would see me go to sleep, okay. wake up, and then I would have a whole record. So yeah. he would get pissed. So that's how we would battle. So yeah. his competition has always been me, yeah. right? Uh, the friendly father and son competition. So, I love that. And the goal was if you can't finish the record, if you don't come with it quicker, then we got to go with my version. Exactly. Right? Mm, so I love that. He's That's in the dumb. studio uh, and he started laying his joint and he's singing his melody. So he's already guiding the way he wants the song to go. When they came back in, I t the song was finished. I told them, we redid the whole record. I told them, I said, the, the, the one guy that was there, don't say we did anything. Don't tell them. Who do you think they ran, they walked to as they was walking in. They went right to him and said, mm -hmm. oh man, it's fire, you switched it. The, the, the writer that was in there. Yeah. One by one, they coming in. So finally Harmony came in there and I said, he said, can I tell him? I said, yeah. He was like, no, Pop did that. Yeah. And Harmony was sitting there and I swear to God, did we laugh about it to this day. He was sitting outside and he was just looking at it. He's like, I didn't know, I didn't know. bro. <laughs> yeah. And I said, nigga, you never asked. Yeah, you never asked. Yeah. You came in and just saw a cute kid yeah. that can sing mm -hmm. and was like, yeah. I'm gonna, Put a song on them. Yeah, I, yeah, that's that, right. That's, yeah, that's that, what Troy didn't do. Yeah, you gotta ask them. Troy, when we them. walked to the studio, go into the studio, he turned right around. We laughed because he mimicked everything Troy does, it's like cracking jokes. Troy would turn right around and be like, "So what are we doing?" And then he he didn't whatever with this girl, such such this, and then that's what the song is about. Exactly. And I think Troy mentioned things about like when you're a star, people want to dress like you. Put it like he wears Letterman jackets. Yeah. Parents, I can show you over a hundred parents in his DM saying my kid wants a Papa J jacket. I yeah. said, We ain't got no Papa J jacket. Yeah. They said, No, the, the Letterman jacket. The kids are calling it the Papa yeah. J jacket. Yeah. Right? Troy would see shit pop got on and be like, Oh, that's wrong. I'm, I'm grabbing that. Yeah. Right? So I I would what would I do with you in the malls when you were young? My pops, he would like, we'd go into a store or something like that, and they'd be packed with people or whatever, right? He'll walk off from me, <laughs> and I'll just be like, just let's just say shopping or whatever it is, just looking at clothes. And then I didn't understand this at the time, but he'll film it, and then if you look at the footage at first, it'll be a bunch of people that just gravitated around to where I was, like, and it was for no reason to be. There'll be nobody around where them. I was, mm -hmm. and then you know be, what I'm they were, and I would put them in the mall, and I would walk over to the side. See, the thing you said about the parents is that. I'm not the parent that if he can't play baseball, I'm gonna tell you his ass can't play baseball. Mm -hmm. right? I'm not the parent gonna just say it because it's my son, yeah. right? So what I did was with him was test everything possible, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. To okay, what, what does this mean? Well, son, you have aura that they just keep surrounding around you. Yeah, we'll go we'll go to the movies. I used to make him sit by himself. The whole movie would be empty, and everybody would just sit in mm -hmm. the circle around him. For sure, right? So everything was tested. So when it was time, I said, okay, it's time. To do the music and we got with Troy 
Mm. Troy thing was just, hey, we, we work, we have fun, right? And it's not, uh, we have to have this type of record and we have to do this. Exactly. Because he's still 16, he's just 16. Mm. You know what I'm saying? He's 16, yeah. very successful at a very early age. He's booked until he's 19 with movies. Mm. You know what I mean? And not a lot of people can say that. Yeah, for sure. Right? And not a lot of people can say they've been top five in casting. Mm. You know, so when it comes to the artistry, the music has always been there. I just made it so <laughs> he ain't in there, you know, like my livelihood is based off Got you. Yeah. getting a record deal. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I love that. So in, you're 16 now. Mm. What would you like to accomplish? What are some of your goals you have for yourself on the music side? Um, Really just bringing back, like, the the teenage R and B, you know what I mean? Cause I feel like it's definitely missing. It's like I'm even noticing, you know, just from the response with my friends and not just friends, but even when I put it out there, it's like, yo, your music is making me feel like how I used to feel back in the day, like the good feeling. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But it's still new. It's not like just an old yeah. type of record. No, it's just that feeling of yo, we got something new. Yeah. So yeah, is there anything you would say to describe that? Like. What's, um, what's something that you said bring back? So what is something you would say that needs to be brought back? Um, just the feeling too. Like I feel like, let's say for a dude, right? And I make most of my my music, you know, for women. You know what I'm saying? Or pretty much all of it. Mm -hmm. But for a dude, if you go listen to my record, I feel like you are gonna feel like you can bag any chick once you listen to the joint. Mm. You gonna feel like, hey man, I'm finna go slide out today. I'm finna go put something fresh on. Yeah. I'm finna go talk to this girl. Yeah. Because even with my my music, my my melodies, the way it's it, it's written, you know what I mean. It's like you can use this stuff as as pickup lines. You can use this stuff just talking. Period. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying. And then as well, like I had a studio session where we brought some girls through, had some homies come through. Troy was there. This was the other day. We made a record, and it was just like just the reactions of everybody because it was like we don't. This is some new. Yeah. It's not some you can really related to mm. you know what i mean or say this sounds like somebody's record or this sounds like something no it sound like papa j it sound like something fresh and mm. new that i want to get on like i want to i want to know what this <laughs> you is wanna, you want to do it yourself yeah that's how you know it works yeah. and so, we'll bring about 60 kids in the studio those will be like the a and r is so you 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 live here you live in in chicago, chicago in LA. okay chicago in LA. gotcha for sure oh chicago and la okay gotcha mm -hmm. gotcha mm -hmm. Yeah, so what you saying? So you bring, so you get kids to the studio and have them like test the music. Yeah, and we play everything and we will watch how they move. Like, you know, my my, like when he, he got a record was to take care of you, girl. Mm -hmm. When we had a hook a certain way, but they just kept going crazy over this one part of the record. Mm. So we just boom brought it back in. Brought took this part out, put it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And we would ask, you know, I would ask him because I'm I'm around him twenty four seven, so I'm. I'm I'm listening to what the kids is rocking with. Exactly. Right. And you know, hey, what about this stuff? No, we, that ain't that's going out of style. Like, you know, because they are already on to the next thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they they 15 seconds of fame. Yeah. So 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 the plan is is that you obviously put out music. So is the plan you're gonna just keep putting out music independently, and then like is the goal to sign a deal? Is the goal to like put out music and see like to stay independent? Like, just curious. Independently, it's been going very well for us. Mm -hmm. You know, I just dropped a single called Hard to Find. It got a million in the first month. And independently, that's mm -hmm. that's dope with it. We haven't even dropped the video yet. Yeah. There hasn't been no serious, serious push, for sure. push just yet. So for us to do it ourselves and, and, you know, own the rights to our record, not have to worry about certain percent percentages to a label, which, of course, if it's the a great label situation, then, hey, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I think definitely we would be interested in 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 the call and, and meeting up. But it's no point if you're gonna do the exact same thing that we doing ourselves. Wh which is what? I feel like just, you know, when it comes to marketing. Like putting it out know, marketing. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Come like yeah. go on TikTok. Like they, go on but but just so you know, regardless of you on the label, you still gotta do the work. That's yeah. why I'm yeah. saying that. Like that's like Well he 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 expand, we did a one off with with a with a label. <laughs> and he, ex he experienced it. And the only reason mm -hmm. I did the deal situation, because I'm still the parent that Troy, you know, I'll tell Troy, I'm like, no, I'm going to take this meeting because I need him to see the meeting. Yes. Right? I need sure. him to be in there. And, and so it's never a situation like that. Well, you said we should, maybe we should have. 
No, nah, you gonna go in here? I don't say one word in the meeting. Yeah. Look, if I told you he ain't tag me in, I'm sit my ass over exactly. there and let him do his thing. Exactly. But what he saw on the label was what we did everything. Yeah. It was. <laughs> we, it was pretty much on. It was on you. Yeah. So. So me, and he didn't know that that <laughs> was you know so we had so was it a label was a distribution partner no no we we he, it was a 1.7 million dollar deal oh and they you know still I mean? didn't no we we had a record that that did a million views in the first day forty five thousand new followers and it took off it went yeah. viral did the situation they took over what two months yeah, to put took, the record yeah. out so what? it was like it was two no, months to put to like go. where you gonna miss the ball so wait yeah, and then they waited it. they waited three months just to do a so all we got out of it besides me knowing how the business works and and doing our thing you know but what do we wait three months to do a photo shoot yeah like literally he, his his marketing budget <laughs> was eight hundred and fifty thousand mm. dollars he uh, the, the deal i struck i had i ex executive produced it with my like it was a great deal Great and game. it wasn't for long either. Yeah. He's a minor too, so yeah. you know it, it won't. Yeah. But now we have our digital guy who is one of the top. He worked for L.A. Reid. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Marcus is our uh, playlisting guy. You know, Troy Marshall. That's yeah. who do our, mm -hmm. our radio. Yeah, radio right, promo. You know what I mean? Troy, take, like, so we have everything that the label has. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it just has to make it has to make what, sense. What the only thing that here's the only thing that. The only, here's the major difference between being independent and on a major. Uh, when you're independent, it's all on you, meaning the people you got working for you, it's all on you. So like, say if you're independent and you like, okay, he's gonna be my marketing guy, that's gonna be my PR person, and that's gonna be my digital marketing person, right? You say that. The, when they are, if they're independent, that means Troy can blame him. Frank can blame Troy. When you, that's why it's, that's the hard part of being independent. Mm -hmm. So I actually, I actually recommend people not to spend money when they're independent. I say just put out records because the music business does have the data where if you got 3,000 streams, they could tell you if this is a 3,000 stream that's gonna lead to 300,000. And if they got to 100,000, they can tell you we're gonna get to a million. So they can tell you what it is, but I, I, when I hear people talk about spending money, it makes me nervous because I'm like, that's how they end, like you said, that's how they end up in that situation where they don't have nothing. So it's like, I use it for example. I, everything I apply, I apply to this podcast, right? I started it, nigga, I started it shooting in my office, no mics plugged in. Like, and then we was like plugging a mic, and then my guy right there was like, yo, we need all this equipment. I'm like, I ain't getting all that shit. Mm -hmm. We got $1,200 worth of equipment here. Mm -hmm. We good. And we can't make this, we can't make it work with that. Right. Why are we talking about that? So mm -hmm. we got it, and then it got to the point where I built the set and everything else. But I wasn't doing none of that until I knew that we could do it. So even, so my position I'm in now is I have, People like iHeart, people like Gamma, like, man, you think we can afford you? And I'm like, like all I did was do, like, is all I did was do the work. And to be honest with you, I want to be a part of an enterprise because I want the group economics that they can do that just sends me money while I'm still doing what I'm doing as long as the splits is working in my favor. But you know, just looking at this shit, the heart, that the major, they supposed to work together. That's what make, that's the difference. So your marketing person, your digital marketing person, your A and R, your publicist, they all report to the same person. So he's like, who went? You went, you went. When you're independent, they all independent. So now they're like, uh-uh. He don't know what he's doing. Your publicist is dumb. He's stupid. And I'm, and it's like, bro. And that's why. So I'm like, you got the name. You already got the plan. And no disrespect, because Troy Marshall is my nigga. And I love, but figure out how you can make it shake without nobody pressing a dollar. And you get there, I promise you, you ain't going to need, you ain't going to care about the industry or nothing. Just get it where you can do it without a dollar. If you need a dollar, you're at the mercy of them. Because you spent a dollar today, you're going to need a dollar tomorrow to spend two. Maybe two. Because you spent a dollar yesterday. But if you don't spend no money today and you just do the work, come back and do more work tomorrow, more work, and then all of a sudden it works. That would probably be the advice I give you. I, it's, I, I want to ask Troy, like, I know you ain't on camera, but it's like, like, how hard, like, think about how difficult it is to make a superstar today. Like, my nigga, do you know how hard it is? to make a superstar music like it takes it takes the right artist the most patience you can have and the right attitude and you got to constantly do it and you might do it for nine months and get 12 inches and then the next month you get 39 inches so it's like it's inconsistent but you got to do it mm -hmm. and that's the that's the part where it's like so i'm listening to you, i'm like damn like 
And I love it. Y'all got y'all shit together. But I'm like, damn, can this work? So what, I'm like, if you sign to a label, what are they going to do? Nigga, you sign to a label, they're going to blame your career on you. I'm telling you. You sign to a label, they're going to blame the movies on you. Oh, we would have had a tour for you if you wasn't filming a movie. Music is, they some jealous motherfuckers. They're going to make you pick. <laughs> Am I right, Trey? You ain't lying. Like, like, yeah, territorial. They, yes. They, they, that's how they work. So I'm, like, I'm looking at you, and I'm like, damn, like this dude, hey, this young brother, his son, they got together. They know what they want to do. They know how they want to do it. That's beautiful. I just fuck the game. Don't worry, about, I would, that would be my, don't worry about the music industry. I mean, I don't even care about them. Like me, I don't care. I'm, I'm in my own space. I'm not in no podcast world. I'm not a part of when they do the podcast summits. I'm not on that shit. Like I'm, I just, you know what I'm saying? I just do me. You know what I'm saying? But it goes back to perspective, like you yeah. said, right? So even if, if we, if we, it, my thing is always, and Troy hit me, said, my, my team of people, like you mentioned the Troy Marshall, right? Troy, Wayne spent shit with Troy. Mm -hmm. Troy has done a, done a lot because he family. You believe, exactly. Right? Mm -hmm. um, I always tell my team, what, as soon as I, they, if it's a dollar amount, what is my ROI? Mm -hmm. You know what my ROI is when it comes to acting? Tell me. It's 100%. Yeah. He don't have to audition. We sit and read scripts. He said, this is what we're going to do. We go make money. Mm -hmm. We get paid every Friday, mm. every episode. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So at the end of the day, if, if I go spend, then we're, he knows. I, this is the budget, Pop. And then, oh, we got a tour coming up, and you're about to make a half million. So, yes, I will put in this amount to go get this. You yeah, see what I'm saying? For sure. So everything is just building, building, sure. building. And, again, every day I ask them, do you want to keep do this shit? Mm. Every day. It's, it's on me for real. I don't, I don't, but, see, but, see, but see, here's the thing. That's your dad. And that's, like, that's my son right there. My son can tell me he want to do anything. I'm with him because I'm his dad. But if you're working with other adults who's not that, like the, we, I don't want you to stop. Cause like it's kind of like what? <laughs> like we've been working all this much. You want to stop? So that's the that's a, another element to it that makes it more difficult because where you would have to be a star to make a million. Like I love to ask. Like I wonder when Usher made his first million. Like Trey made his first million. Uh, you talking about the music business? Yeah, the music business. Uh -huh. Like when they made, and and and. Back then, I'm willing to bet that it came a lot later than it comes now. I mean, you, now you got motherfuckers like, I mean, S S Sexy Red is multi, 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 multi millionaire at this very moment. And she's independent and, you know, she ain't, she doing it her way. So it's just too much money in it to make someone want to stay in it. That's the hard part. It's so much money in music now. For the artists, oh my God. Shit, that'd be... I got I had artists. I didn't cut two million dollar checks from, and they was out the game after that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry to laugh, but I'm talking about nigga. I had you cut nigga two million. Nigga, I had a nigga get a cut seven hundred thousand and quit the music business the next day. Started a construction company. He's rich as fuck. You smart. You smart. You smart. You smart. Rich as fuck. You smart. Nigga took his advance and went and left music. Like he got an advance of music, left music, put it in something else. So when I see people, I'm like, y'all got y'all shit together. Y'all doing great. Don't be in the music business. Do music, but don't be in the music business. That's what I would say. Like, no, no, you know, yeah, totally, like don't totally. be up there. Cause, cause, it, Cause if you could do, if you, cause like, I'd say that girl Lele, like she's, I was at a show. She had fucking 5,000 kids at College Park Arena. She got like 19,000 monthly listeners on Spotify. How the hell are you selling out 5,000? Because she's the brand. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It just works that way. They want to see her. They don't even care what she sings or raps about. Yes. They're trying to figure out how to make the better music. But she could sell 5,000 CDs with no records. I mean, bro, I was in there listening to like, like kid shit. Like, it was weird. Like, and by the way, I just did a, I got a kid's album that me and Teron did. We just did the deal with Universal Republic, Kids Property, with Teron's son. Mm -hmm. He's eight years old. We just... Almost gave us a million dollars for the project. Like, just some shit we created out of scratch. So I get it, but y'all don't have to. Y'all don't need to be in it. I was, I would say, like, don't even play the music business. Like, literally just be like, oh, y'all put music out. Like, almost not even be an artist. Like, I'm an artist, I put music out, but I'm not playing by y'all game. Y'all not about to have me thinking I'm about to do everything y'all want me to do. And the reason why I say do that is because, number one, you're too confident in what you're doing, right? Uh, this music business preys on weak. I'm not 100%. trying to be a dick. I mean, it's real, you like, ain't weak. Like, if, if you get a 16 year old kid who can sing his ass off and dance his ass off and don't know what he want to do, you just made every producer, music exec happy as fuck. Give him to me. I know what to do with him because they're going to put the thoughts in him. They're going to put the stuff in him. But you already know what you want to do. Well, he has his thing. I tell T. 
Start spilling like the music industry. Regular, we Start don't do it. Start spilling record label-ish. Get out of it. Like they're, they're calling me like, oh, we need a such such tech record. I'd be like, bro, I don't nah. give a shit. No. You don't play that game. We don't do that. Like, we don't, it, I don't need, like, it's to be successful. Like, I always, like, I can show you a text message. Somebody, hey, I got a seven-figure deal for you. Well, bro, I eat with motherfuckers that we like. Mm. That's it. Mm. So my team is full of people that we like. Troy's mm. our guy. Like, if I mention anybody on the team, they never miss the birthday party. Mm. This before everything that happened. They yeah. never miss shit that I was, whatever I was doing. Mm -hmm. Right? So I eat with people I like. And plus, I don't need you to give me a seven-figure deal. I can do that myself. Mm. I don't need to get the, the money in music. Mm. I can get the money in movies and put it in the music if I mm. choose to. I wouldn't do that. You said I said I, I can. Say, no, I said, you should, no, I'm not. Right. I'm just saying, I know. I, you ever try? I'm like, no. I heard you. I'm like, don't I, do that. I said I can. Yeah. Right? So, so I don't. In any offer, it will only have to make sense that it's it's a play off something that we already planned on. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, for so, sure. So, again, back to happiness and joy. Mm. And as long as he, it pulls you out of bed in the morning, I tell him, well, you date a, a girl, she better, if she brings joy, it's going to want you to be around. As long as you love what you're doing, we don't care about, I don't care about views. I don't care about uh, streams, I don't care about what we care about is we set a goal and we want to accomplish it. Yeah, that's me too. That's it. Yeah. We set a goal and went to accomplish it. That's it. I don't, it, uh, anything else, regardless of music, whatever, he'd still be the most popular kid at school. Mm. He'll still be successful. You know what I'm saying? And if we don't do this at all, that's why I ask him every day. You know, I, I you can have me, you can, uh, on phones with execs, and I'll say, if he want to stop doing this TV show in the middle of doing it, we're not doing it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I don't give a fuck about the industry. I care about him. So that's right. That's I got, it. I gotta ask you a question as a father. Why would you allow that and not make him stick with it? Just curious. Allow what? Like why would you if he decided he wanted to walk away from it, why would you allow that and not make him stick with it? Because I, I don't need if that's this is his life and his career. Mm -hmm. It's not mine, right? A lot of people make you force it. This is what you need to do. No, at no, the end no, of the I'm day. Not, I'm not asking for that. I'm not asking for that reason. I'm asking like I'm asking you as a father because as a father, the way I would tell my, the way I do tell my kids is, is that I don't care if you don't want to do it. You said you was going to do it, so you have to keep your word. No, I get that, but it can be. A that's what I was asking. Like, it could be a situation that if his, if his comfort level is not there. That's okay. Again, that's different. I don't care about these cameras. I mm -hmm. care about him. Mm -hmm. So he, I can go tell him and for like again, it's two different parenting. You yeah. have your way of yeah, for right? sure. No, I that's have, what I was asking. Yeah, no, yeah. I know, I know. I'm just saying like. That's why I would let even the, the exec know. Mm -hmm. I don't care mm -hmm. if if in the middle of the shit and he don't want to do it no more, mm -hmm. then we're not doing it, mm -hmm. right? That's why you got the Nickelodeon shit. That's why mm -hmm. you got the kids getting all this bullshit <laughs> you know, going all that on. Bullshit surviving right? Nickelodeon because yeah. you need to go do this. You well, mom, I'm not comfortable. Like this person is making me on. So what? You signed up for it? No, hell no. We're not doing it. Mm -hmm. Like we really from the South Side of Chicago. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. So any bullshit go down, it's like, bro, I don't care about none of that. Yeah, I care about him. Course. I have full custody of my son. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So th this is this is our livelihood. And again, when you talk about the team, we bet on each other, mm. right? Because again, this start off as a father and son. Like if you take your son fishing, I took him to the studios. That was it. Yeah. It wasn't let's get into the industry. Yeah. It was like you okay. Well, he just work on spelling. Well, then let, let me use rap what he likes exactly and teach him how to spell. Mm -hmm. Well. Once he said that I really want to take this serious, that's what we did. Yeah, that that was it. And so again, regardless of the end result, my man here can have a man. This kid could be a billionaire. We can have a different perspective of what we want to do our life. Exactly. Well, people will come in. Then if somebody can come in and tell us what's not going to happen, then I have to say that that person is God. Mm. You have. Then I have to not honor this man upstairs and say that just like the agents, they was like, "You're not going. No, that's not going to happen again." What? We booked everything we said we was going to book. Mm -hmm. And anything that didn't happen, I would ask them, did you pray on it? Did, yeah. you, did you write it down and manifest? Mm. People don't even know how to manifest. Mm. Oh, let, I want to book. No, thank you for allowing me to book X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. Thank you for this and this and that. Oh, mm -hmm. I can't wait. To, I told Reggie Hutton on a, set of Cree, on a set of safety, he will be in Creed. I don't know what direction they're going. Mm. Right? And Michael, Michael B. Jordan will tell you the, 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 the story. Yeah. Right? So, again, in life, that man right there got his path. You have your path. You have your path, and he got his path. Yeah. People come in and tell you, mm -hmm. right? I don't even give people advice. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna tell you why, because God has a plan for your journey, mm -hmm. right? So if I come in and give you advice, I may throw you off your journey, mm -hmm. right? Now I'm playing God, right? But but then what? A, but then 
then then you're saying. So if you, I, mean, I already know that you don't go. If you ask me for advice, I'll give no, it no, to no, you. No, 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 but listen to me. But right. I, if you ask me for advice, I'll give it to you. But I'll still always say you should keep doing what you're doing. Mm. No, no. But what I'm asking, what I'm speaking of is that is that God sends blessings and messages through people. So, so for example, same scenario. I'm coming up in the music business. I got an artist that I'm signed to. I'm taking him everywhere. He like my little brother. We trying to get on. Everybody we went to said the music. The, the he's good. The music could be better. Shit. The guys I was with was like fuck them. I'm like okay. Well, let's not say fuck them. Now they they in the industry. Now they they know a little bit more than us, right? Nah, you, you don't believe no more. Okay, I don't believe, but nigga, I'ma listen to a winner. I'ma listen to a winner every time, and I don't care if, the, and by the way, the winner can abuse me in it. It don't bother me. You can tell me you ain't shit. Okay, cool, how can I be something then? I'm not a nigga like, I ain't shit, fuck you. Oh, I ain't shit, okay, cool. What's shit? I felt like I've been told I ain't shit by people in my own family, so I understand that, so tell me how I could be something. And that's literally how I turned my stuff around, and those same guys was like, we ain't listening to those guys. We gonna do it our way. And that one of the guys is working selling cars now. But can, you, can you also agree with it since you've been in the business that you also know how this business is based off what you just said earlier? They pray on the week. No, no, right, I wait. Let me let me just okay. finish. Pray on the week, right? So the same guys that said the music isn't there, it could be also a factor like who am I trusting, right? And then it could also be a situation where hey, I need to control this person. Mm -hmm. We've been in multiple studio sessions where producers say this stuff is whack. Listen to my beats. No, no, no. But see, that's what I'm saying. It wasn't that. And see, even if it was that, I only hear winner. I only want to hear what you did to work. So if I'm in a room with you and you telling me that if I'm talking to Troy and Troy is telling me something's wrong, I could believe all I want. But I want to hear what he has to say because in music, is you have to bulletproof yourself. Like, you have to damn near bulletproof. Uh, like, the scariest thing is putting out a record because it's like, damn, I believe in it. Damn, I think it's a hit. Well, Fuck, well, I think. And then you put it out and then no one likes it. Right? So it's like, so my thing was was that I wanted to just learn because what did I did know, and by the way, all those guys that told me the music wasn't good, I passed all of them. But they was telling me what they needed, what they felt confident in to take to their bosses. I had to understand that. Yeah, exactly. So if everyone is saying the music could be better, then why wouldn't we as a team, not saying you good, this is what I was like telling them, like, why we don't just make the music better? And they would be like, oh, you don't believe. And I was like, I don't believe, I'm just broke as fuck. And I'm like, if a nigga got money telling me what I could do to get some money, I'm gonna listen to the nigga with money. And then, we, and then they left me, and I took the artist, went and got better beats, Mark Pitts gave my first deal. I've been up since, I ain't went back. But I do feel like there are, like it's like I always say, we are all on the yellow brick road of life. We all are. We all are on a yellow brick road of life looking for the Wizard of Oz that we think is going to give us something that it took us to get. Took what we felt like we needed to get, right? So in the Wizard of Oz, it's about, I always say Wizard of Oz is about God, right? It's like we're off on a yellow brick road to find this wonderful Wizard of Oz, right? I want a brain. I want a heart. I want courage. I want to go home. It took a brain. It took heart. And it took courage to do all of the things that y'all did. So by the time you get to the wizard, he's up there. He's smart enough to know I need to be sitting up here. I can't be down here because they're going to think I'm regular. I got to go up there. And he goes up there and he's like, you have a heart now. And you feel like you have a heart. He was just smart enough to know that you needed heart to get to him. And to me, that's what I mean by preying on predators. Like they know, like they'll want you to doubt yourself. I'm not saying, I'm saying if I went with five meetings over a month period and everybody said the artist is dope, but the beast can be better, I'm going to stop and listen. And I did, and I got my artists together, and I got them a deal. And since then, I've been making money in music, and I've always been a seeker of knowledge, always been a seeker of answers. That's why I know what I know, because as a black man, I went in rooms, and niggas would tell me, oh, yeah, you want, I'll never forget. First time I got up, first time I was in New York, I got Noah CD in my pocket, we had Noah, and I seen Tata, Jay-Z Tata, mm -hmm. in a Bentley. Oh, in Times Square. And I'm like, yo, that's Tata. I run up on Tata. I got a CD. He's like, you got a CD? Yo, go to, you see that building right there? Go up there, stand up, hang out in front of that building. You're going to see everybody. Man, we was out there for four fucking hours. I ain't seen nobody. <laughs> Tata played the fuck out of us. But I remember, I remember, I remember, because as much as it's funny, this is how I was going to feed my family. It wasn't funny to me. And I remember being like, God, if you help me get to my place, when I get there, if I know the answer, I'm going to tell everybody I know. If you look like me and you need an answer, I'm going to give it to you. I don't care, I'm going to give it to you. And then you don't take, by the way, you don't have to take it, but I know, I, like you said, 
I did my work up. I did my work. I did my part, right? All right, I told them. They ain't listen. They ain't listen. Come someone, when someone told me, I had to listen. Because I ain't had no choice in my mind. And shit, thank God I'm here. So when I speak, I'm just like, I hear it. I'm just trying to understand like the, I actually think you should stay away from it. Because y'all got it together. And you can make millions of dollars in the music and not be with a label. So why go to a label? No, we play that game. Well, we already agree on that. That's never been the the focus of us. I would have done the deals in the past. Yeah, but no, but it's but even the deals. Okay, so let me tell you what I mean by that. That that doesn't what you just said doesn't count to this. Deals is bullshit. Like that's why when I said on tape, when I like people got mad at me when I was like, you could tell a lot by a nigga about what he celebrate. You celebrate and sign the deal. What you don't know is that they got to sign a hundred of y'all a year. And they and they know out of the hundred they sign, only five works. Exactly. So it's like somebody just bet on me. It ain't even a deal. They said they made a bet on me. Mm-hmm. If I win, I win. If I win, we win. But if I don't win, they still win. So I don't. They don't really care if it works out in our favor or not because they made a bet. The bet was made. Shit, I bet on you. I bet on you. I bet on you. I bet on all y'all. I'm bet. I'm put. I'm put a million on everybody. One of these motherfuckers gonna get my money back. That's how the music business works. So I. So y'all ain't playing that game. Y'all have a goal, a dream. I would stay away from it. Just my opinion. I wouldn't even let but them. When I wouldn't you say even, stay away from what? Though? What I mean so, by what I mean by like so, we, we so like so like that. I'm not in the music business mm. right now. Everybody that try to tell you I'm in. I'm not in the music business. I don't make no outgoing phone calls. I don't go to LA. I don't go see no labels. I don't call no labels. Everybody that I'm working with right now calls me. So you're I'm in the Ray Daniels doing. business. You doing what we doing? That's, that's my point. Yeah. I'm doing that, like like I have my own building. I got one of the biggest producers of all time right there just walking through the building. What's up, Tricky Stewart? <laughs> one of the biggest producers of all time just randomly right. walking through the building. Like, I wanted to build my own economy. I didn't want to chase theirs because right. I know that they control it. That's why I'm like, y'all got too much control. Stay away from that shit. I, would, I, I wouldn't even think about it. Like, I don't even, I don't, I, I'm, I'm, but I'm all about being independent. Like, I'm, I, I'd rather own all my stuff. I'd rather do it myself and learn it because I want to, I like, I, I, as confident as y'all are, I like to have that. Well, I am that. That's how I am at what I do. I'd rather be that confident. And that comes from, like you said, I done put in 50,000 hours. Shit, I'm tired, man. <laughs> so I'm tough. tired. So when I see somebody, I'm like, yo, don't go play the game. Because all they're going to do is take from you. That's it. So all they're going to mm-hmm. do is take from you and use you and for, make their date. And that's not y'all goal. Y'all goal is to do it. A father and son, family, family business, family office. I wouldn't, I would just do that. I wouldn't, somebody called me being in the music business, record deal, what's that? I don't want to do that. What's that? Why would I do that? I got I mean, I'll go on tour. I'll go do business with Live Nation. Mm-hmm. I'll go do business with all those. I just wouldn't do business with a record label. Fuck no. I own my shit. That's what I would say. Mm-hmm. And the re- yeah, so, <laughs> after to this point, what is next for Papa J? Man, still going. Dropping music, um, movies. I got two shows. Well, I was shooting two shows at the same time for around like three months. I just wrapped um, another show. I was shooting one in Canada and one out here. That's why I was mm, in uh, Atlanta. Yeah. And, um, one for Netflix and one for Hulu. Yeah, one for Netflix okay. and one for Hulu. So those are both coming out literally a month apart um, this summer, August and September. Mm. And, um, yeah, man, just just steady working. Like like I said, this is fun. Like For sure. It's yeah, really I, it's kind of, everything is, I love this shit. I wouldn't be doing it if it wasn't, honestly. Yeah. Like, man, I'm dropping music. I get to see the reactions of people. And I know it's going to go up. Like, mm. I, I know. For sure. I'm telling you. Exactly. And that's what I mean by uh, yes. T, what I mean by I wouldn't play the game. Mm-hmm. Because a label game is strategic. Like, they not, if you drop your B side record and to get to the A, they not going to a C record because you want to. They ain't the fuck that. They like, we going after this. Oh, yeah. Definitely. That's what I mean by I wouldn't play their game. Because oh, yeah, yeah. I play my own game. Like, I'd rather put this record out myself. By the way, I, I, I don't even know how record label sign deals no more. I would just do one offs. I'd be like, Troy, what you got for me? You got something for me? Give it to me. Let's make some money. I put it out. If it goes good, it goes. If it doesn't, you ain't worried about me having you in a five album deal, and I ain't worried about you asking me for more money to do more shit. Mm-hmm. Everybody wins. Rather than me locking you in because you got a viral song, locking you into a five album deal. Right. <laughs> nigga, this nigga got a viral song, song, and you want to do a five album deal. We don't even know if we're going to get to a second viral song. Oh, right. Exactly. So that's why I would tell you, like, I wouldn't play this game, bro. I would do it my way, man. Like, and I love the, I love how what y'all doing. I'm just, fuck these labels. So let me show you something. I want you to play this. You just said something. Hold on, is this? Hold on, hold on. Go to the I'm seat, a, the I'm dog. A, I'm gonna throw for my dog. Go to the dog. What is that? The speaker. It's the speaker. I'll play that, but I want to play some based off what he just said. 
What's that? It's Wi Fi. It's a speaker. Oh, it's a speaker? Yeah. I'll play on the phone right now. How, how do you. Uh, What's the Bluetooth? Oh, I'm gonna say, to make sure I'm not connected to it. Radar. <laughs> no, 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 I'm no, no, it's hold on, hold on. I'm disconnected. All right, cool. Now you should go. C H dash M Dog. C H dash M Dog. It should come up now. Uh, we get to use the dog. There you go. <laughs> the dog start barking and shit. You see it? You see it? All right, perfect. <laughs> but I want you to. You gotta see this though. Okay. Yeah. So. Hey, Pop, you know I like it. to him early. Yeah, right. everything, everything you said, that was instilled at five years old. Yeah, I love, that's, and that's, that's what I love the most about y'all. Like, you realize that the power's in your hand. Mm -hmm. Most people are given, think the power's in someone else's hand, they give that person power, they, they don't have none. The power's in our hands. You just gotta decide to do something with it. And, you know, you could think you gotta go big, but that was on Instagram. And as long as you got Instagram, you, you got a, a shot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you no, know, definitely. No, yeah, so um So have you heard a song Hard to Find? No, no, no. I, I don't I like to discover everything on the show. Like I okay. like to find out. Well I can play it for you. Like it's an A and I mean call it reaction. Real reaction. <laughs> mm -hmm. I like that. Um, mm -hmm. What's the name of it? Hard to find. My only thing I would say is, when you're young, you you have an excuse to be immature. Use it to your advantage. So like when Chris Brown, when he was 16, he was like, "You got me saying yo, don't know your name, but like that yo though, that was like different for a kid to say. Like he said yo, like." He was saying, like, and not by the way, the lyric was, I don't know your name, but excuse me, miss. I saw you from across the room, but he goes back. But it got my attention. You're making me want to say yo. The yo was the youthful part. So when, I, when I'm working with artists, like, like especially black artists, black artists main, black artists main con contribution in, from black music to all music is lingo. So black artists can't just say, how you doing? Right, even when Bruno Mars, he says, Versace on the floor. That was his way of saying, drop them draws. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, it's like, you gotta find. 
So the only thing I would say is that I would have more fun with lingo if I was you. Mm -hmm. I would just, I, I, I want to feel like I'm listening to like, like I, I never forget being 14 years old on a school bus and hearing kick off your shoes, relax your feet, party right down to the, uh, just kick it, just kick it, just kick it. Damn, that sound like me. That doesn't sound like an adult. That sound like how kids talk. So when I hear music from, from a young artist, I want to feel like I'm listening to young artists. Like, like Troy said on the show, he said Troy's first song that he dropped that was Just Gotta Make It. He was 17 saying Just Gotta Make It. I don't think a 28-year-old man could just go up to a woman and be like, I'm just trying to make it. It's like, you 28, nigga. <laughs> damn near you ain't made it yet, nigga. You ain't made it. But a 17-year-old saying Just Gotta Make It. So when I hear music, I look like I'm way different when it comes to music. I'm like a tactician. Like, we're like, like I always say, like, and I say this humbly, like, we don't miss. The reason why we don't miss is because we're not aiming for nothing but you. And if we can't, I'm taking everything you are and making it what it has to be. I'm applying science to you. That's all I would say. Like, it's great, good song. But it could every last lyric could have been sung by a 21 year old man too. That's why you gotta choose your cheat code is your youth. Use it. Trust me, it, it works every time. Baby, 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 oh, kid. Like, it just felt youthful. Usher was talking about, can you, can you get with it? He was 14, he's a virgin to my sex. <laughs> like, on top, on top of a car, right in the drop top. I ain't got much money, I ain't got them diamond rings. I ain't trying to be funny, it's only a sexual thing. Can you get with it? Who's driving? Puff. Shut up, man. <laughs> <laughs> yo, AP, that was filthy. That was filthy, AP. That was filthy, yo. That was filthy. And I, my stupid ass just get, my that stupid ass just fall right into the trap. Yeah. <laughs> my stupid ass just fall right into the trap. But yeah, that's what I would say. So like, so like when, when, I, when, I, when we work with artists, I'm always kind of like, <laughs> you got, got me, right? Filthy. I'm always like, what do you want to do? What do you want to say? Like, what would you say? Like, how would you say that? Like, like Rihanna wanted to, Rihanna's favorite song at the time was Bands Make It Dance. And Rihanna was like, I want my own version of that. So we did Pour It Up. You know what I'm saying? When Teron wrote Man Down for Rihanna, he wanted to do I Shot the Sheriff Part Two, but the female version. So we, we always kind of know where we're going. Like, this is the concept. We kind of play off shit that I already won. When I think about kid shit, I think about, I think about immaturity. Like, immature. Like, the group immature. Like, when you go listen to their songs, they played in, like, I Will Never Lie Again. <laughs> hey, man, well, I want to tell you, man, I just want to wish you luck. Uh, I love you and your father relationship. Um, I speak on how we need strong men raising these young boys because if a strong man raises a young boy, he just not raising another strong man. That's right, yes, and, and raising another strong man raises another black family. It changes, it changes the cards of everybody coming behind me. That's what your father is doing with you. So kudos to you. Remember, let's clap the tea. I want to see Well, I did a good job with you, and I just wish I would love, wish I would Troy, that ain't gonna work. Yeah, you're a good ass. I got the University of Troy Taylor. This is Artist Spotlight, shout out to our sponsors, and we are out. <laughs>